Hi, welcome to Kokoro Yoga Online. I'm Tracy, and we're here today to focus on forearm handstands, or also called forearm stance. So let's start nice and easy. We'll work our way up to it. Lots of dolphin poses today, if you're familiar with that. It's a really good prep, and we'll go step by step along the way. Start nice and easy again in child's pose, knees wide, big toes together, extend your upper body forward, and bring your forehead down. Just starting to slow your breath. In and out through the nose. If your knees are on the tighter side and that's a little much for you, you can bring your knees together, your arms back. It's a little less strain. Not that there's strain in the other one, but if you do have injury, it's a little easier. Or you can even lie on your back. So I'm just going to show you that real quick. It's really the same thing, just in a different place in space. Just give your knees a little hug, take a few breaths here. Either way, preparing for practice. Another deep breath. Maybe setting a little intention or a goal for your class today. So I'm showing again the modified version of child's pose. If you don't need to modify, knees wide or together. If wide, arms forward. If your knees are together, arms back, palms up. Those in the modification, you can cross your feet at the ankles as you rock up to a seat. If that's not you from your child's pose. We'll actually come to all fours. So those in a seat, make your way to all fours, feet back, shoulders over the wrists, fingers fan wide. Hips above your knees. As you inhale, cat cow, belly down, lift your tailbone and chin. Exhale, curl the spine. Cat spine, look for your navel, tailbone under, inhale, belly down, look up. Exhale, curl. The fingers are fan wide. So you can even feel the webbing of your hands stretch. Why are the hands so important? The hands are your foundation. Especially for where we're going today in the forearm handstand. Really going to utilize your hands as well as the forearms, shoulders, biceps. So here, just warming up spine, breath. See if you can even the length and sound of the breath. Usually easier to create a louder exhale. Let's see if you can work on that loud inhale too. One more of those guys. And exhale. We'll pause back in the center and we'll play with a dolphin pose already here. So your elbows will come down and perfect way to measure your forearms and the distance between them. Grab opposite elbows and place your palms flat. The middle finger points straight usually, but if you have sensitive wrists, you can turn out your fingers so the index finger is straight. You're not really on the wrist so much here, but it can help ease some pressure. Curl the toes, lift your hips. So essentially down dog on your elbows. And the hard part is going to be to keep your head off the floor. And not a headstand. Your elbows are drawing in like you're squeezing something between your biceps. Maybe a block or a beach ball. And if your hamstrings are tight, calves are tight, maybe your knees are bent here. See if you can create a nice long spine. And for forearm strength, shoulder strength, we'll work our way into down dog from here. So you can go one hand at a time, maybe left and right. Or if you want to go a little more strength, both hands at the same time. We'll press the floor away. You may have to readjust. I'm going to take a little bit of a longer stance here. 
We'll just find that sweet spot again. You can bend your knees in your down dog. Look at the spine. See how long the spine is. What to avoid is a sort of tailbone tucking. So just see that your tailbone is lifting or pressing your belly to your thighs. Let's take three more breaths here. Head below the heart really calms the nervous system. Great way to begin a practice. Wind down from your day. And let go of any distractions. Good reminder is that there's no ego in this practice. Just be really loving and accepting of where you are today. Take one more breath here. And we'll walk the hands to the back of your mat towards your feet. Nice way to strengthen your arms as well. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, fold. So I'm going palms flat with the legs straight. If your legs are bent, you'll be on your fingertips. Take two more of those. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Bending the knees as much as you need. Inhale, look up. And you can even go palms on the shins. Exhale, fold. Nice, and we'll press up, arms overhead. We'll take a little side stretch. Grab hold of your left wrist, left palm faces up. And pull and lengthen through the sides of your waist, your lats. As you reach right, press the hips left. And then we'll switch sides, back through center, pull right wrist, lift up and over to your left side. By working the arms to stack above the legs, so relatively the same plane is ideal. One more breath there, we'll come to center. Hands on the glutes, so it's a super easy back bend. So there are several different versions of the forearm handstand. I'll show you the back bend version. So we're already starting to work our back bends. I like to go with fingers pointing up for the back bend, so that the elbows hug in more, really up to you. Or you can also, if you feel a little fancier, walk your hands down the backs of your legs. Maybe the elbows are bending, eventually the arms will go straight. And if your head is back, you should still be able to breathe. So that nice ocean furnace breath, ujjayi breath. If you're feeling cut off with your breath, probably your chest is not parallel with the floor. So if that's you, just look forward past your nose. Super easy, more of a neutral neck. Also nice to do if you have neck injury. We'll go one more breath here in the back bend. Legs straight, inhale the arms overhead. Palms together, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up. Palms, shins, knees, thighs, or fingers graze the mat, as long as your spine is straight, kind of like the number seven from the side. And we'll walk the hands forward. Again, good for forearm strength, upper body strength, high plank pose. Couple breaths here. Spine long, heels back. So really easy in this pose for misalignments. Most common are your bottom's too high, so you're not creating very much core strength, or the bottom is too low. So you're gonna find that sweet spot in the center where there's no strain in your low back. If you have strain in the low back, you're probably dipping. So heels press back like you're kicking into a wall. Now we'll take a vinyasa here. Shift forward an inch on the toes, lower halfway. If that's ever too much, you can also go to your belly. Cobra, elbows in. Working our back bends today for forearm stand. Chest to the floor. Curl the toes. And we'll press into a high plank from here. Working a little more upper body strength. High plank. And then down dog. Press through the floor. Take a couple breaths. So I showed you Cobra in that last little part. You can also take upward facing dog. 
And we'll inhale the right leg high. Step forward between your hands. Come up for a high crescent pose. Hands on the hips. Sink low into the front knee. And then arms over your head. Warming up here. We'll lower the left knee to the floor. So we can add a back bend. Interlock right behind your head, elbows wide. Lift the chest, nice little back bend. You can stay here if you want to go a little deeper in the back bend. Reach the fingertips for the floor. Maybe they touch, maybe not, doesn't matter. Again, you can drop your head back. If you lose your breath, look forward past your nose. Another nice deep breath here. And we'll rise for a twist, hands to heart. Hook the left elbow outer right knee. Notice the right knee stacks above your ankle, so nice clean lines. Working a little geometry in the body. You can curl your back toes and lift the knee. Nice twist here. And then release the vinyasa, palms plant. High plank pose, step back. Lower halfway or all the way, as we did before. Inhale through the up dog, a little more challenge there. Or cobra and into down dog. Other side, left leg lifts. Step forward, high crescent pose. Hands to hips, sink low front knee, and we'll inhale the arms overhead. And you can back bend from here, it's a little trickier. Or a nice neutral spine to start, as shown. And we'll bring the right knee to the floor, interlock 10 fingers, elbows wide, lift your chest. So here's gonna be the easier version, a little deeper version. Fingertips reach for the floor. Doesn't matter if they touch or not. If your chest goes pretty low, you can drop your head back. You shouldn't lose your breath. Nice hands to heart. Check the knee above ankle alignment. Hook the right elbow this time. Lengthen and twist. You might hear some nice pops. I'm just releasing some air bubbles in the spine. It's always good. Left knee opens. The so left knee is aligned with your left hip. And if you want to add that strength, curl the right toes. Right knee lifts. Can you get your thumbs to your sternum, center of the chest? Lengthen crown of the head. Exhale, twist your chest to the ceiling. Another nice deep breath there. Awesome, we'll release the palms. Step it back, plank. Shift forward an inch lower, halfway. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. And a few breaths. We'll bring the feet together. Lift the right leg. And step to the outer edge of your right hand. Left knee lowers. From here, spin to the outer edge of the right foot. Right palm presses on the thigh. Nice little hip opening stretch. And we'll work the quads as well. Left knee slides back just a few inches. Bend your back knee. Maybe you're not even reaching the foot yet. You still get a stretch here in the quad, even though it looks a little funny. If you're able to, you can reach for your heel. Maybe you have a strap or a towel. You can also wrap on the top of the foot. From the heel, go inner foot. And if you're feeling extra bendy, outer foot. Pull your heel in. Eventually working that elbow to bend. Maybe, maybe. Flex your front foot so your knee is safe. If available, you can lower the left forearm down. If that doesn't feel safe, or the back foot has a lot of tension, back quad. Stay on the palm and fan your fingers super wide. And we'll twist, pull, nice little quad stretch, hip stretch. 
spine long twist. Nice, we'll come back to the palms, release your back foot, toe heel your right foot in, half split or full split. Working a long spine, your breath, hamstring, calf flexibility. Important as we move into those deeper back bends that you're opening your hips, which you just did in that last pose, your hamstrings, your low back, all need to warm up first. Nice, nice. We'll rebend that front knee, plant your palms, step back, plank, and vinyasa. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Other side, feet together, left leg lifts, knee to the elbow and softly land your left foot. So I moved my left hand in a little bit as I step forward. Just a nice little trick there so you're not stepping on your hand when you come forward into this one. You can stay centered or spin to the outer edge of the left foot. Notice the flex of the foot. If I let my foot go lazily like that, my knee gets a lot of that pressure or tension. So as you flex your foot, you're one strong unit there. Important for safety of your joints. I'll press on the thigh. If you wanna go for the quad stretch, you're sliding the right knee back Y so that you're not on the kneecap, but you're more on the lower fleshy quadricep muscles. If available, go for your heel. From there, you can go inner foot or outer foot, and you're pulling that heel in. So again, we're working hip flexibility, quad flexibility, and a nice little spinal twist, which releases your low back. So deep breaths, lengthen and twist. Stay here. Fingers fan wide, that right elbow softens just enough to micro bend so that you're strong in your forearm, your bicep, your shoulder. And we'll bring the right elbow down if available. You can rest your right hand on your left ankle or it's on the floor either way. Pulling in, deep breath, lengthen and twist. One more good breath here. And careful to release that back foot. It may slingshot a little bit. If there's lots of tension or tightness in your quadricep, that's okay. As slowly as you can find your way into half split. And notice this back thigh is straight up and down. You wanna go hip above knee. If it's a tough reach to the floor, I'm a bad example because I have pretty open hamstrings and long arms. But if you're really far from the floor, so you're up here, you can use blocks. You can also sit on your back heel. So same posture here. You don't really need your back leg so much. So it doesn't matter if you're at that 90 degree or you're all the way back. And if that hurts your toes by curling, you can also point the toes, but they have to go straight back and not turn in for your safety. So here is the same thing as here, as here. So all the same pose really. Your focus being on the left leg, flex your left toes. You can even pull on the foot. Another good breath. And we'll re-bend that left knee. Plant the foot, plant the palm, step to plank. And a vinyasa. Inhale. And exhale. A couple breaths in your dog. Spread the fingers, press the floor away. We'll walk the hands to the back of the mat again. Good prep for forearm handstand, opening those arms, strengthening the shoulders. You can pull on your calves. If you're feeling a little fancier, a nice other variation is a crisscross. You can bring your feet into a more narrow position, so closer together. Elbows behind the calves, palms to opposite shins. And you can bend your knees as much as you need to get there. If you're working that fancier variation, you can start to separate your feet a little wider if the elbows can slide down pretty far. You're folding, pulling upper and lower body together. And if you're thinking in your mind, that's too fancy for me and not for me today, it's all good. You're here grabbing your calves or ankles, elbows wide. 
either or, lean forward, lift your toes, the arches of the feet are engaged. And then we'll go hands on hips, nice flat back to rise. And we'll take a second back bend, standing back bend, hands on the glutes. I'm a big fan of this variation. Why? Because if you start to work your arms overhead, you're adding weight to your back bend. So it makes the back bend more intense, but also can add pressure to your low back. So just be mindful if you are going cactus arms or 90 degrees, nice chest opening variation, or even straight arms. Make sure that you're still breathing. So I'm gonna take it back into the straight arm version, behind your back, behind the legs, fingers down, maybe your head will go back. Stay with the breath. If that's too much, look forward past your nose as you back bend further. Lift the heart. And then slow ascent, arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Walk the hands forward. From your down dog, we'll bring the elbows to the floor, kind of like we did in the beginning of our class. You can go one at a time, or both at a time, either way. And we'll shift forward into a forearm plank. And this is really the precursor pose, the prep pose for the forearm stand. A couple of breaths here, heels back. Just like in plank, notice that the hips are not too high, they're not too low, there's no sagging in the low back. Nice straight line of energy. Couple breaths there, lots of strength. Can stay as long as you'd like, and we'll bring the knees to the floor. And now into forearm stand. So similar to headstand, if you're familiar with headstand in the setup, you're grabbing opposite elbows. So in headstand, you'd go for that interlock grip. Here, grab opposite elbows, and you want to create a number 11. So it's even distance between elbow to elbow and wrist to wrist, like you're holding a box. So it's really difficult to keep those elbows in. It's gonna be the biggest challenge for most of us especially if the shoulders are tight, you might notice that your elbows will splay out and the chest will collapse down. So as best you can, keep that elbow to elbow alignment. Nice even distance, middle fingers or index fingers straight. For my sensi wrist friends, so we'll lift the hips. Curl the toes, hips lift. Super strong in the upper body. Everything is squeezing, shoulders down away from the ears biceps towards each other like I had a beach ball between them. Don't want to lose it. And then the head is down. Not on the floor, but hovering. So this is dolphin pose. This is going to be the first prep. Next prep, we're building on the pose. So we have forearm plank, dolphin pose. Those are our two precursor postures. And next will be to come into some hops for forearm stand. So I measured again, plant the palms, find dolphin pose, look between the hands, just like handstand. Walk the feet in, hips over the shoulders as much as you can, and then walk the feet back. A couple times, let's do three today. If you have time for more, you can always pause the video and have at it, as many as you got. And we'll lower the knees, take a little break. Might want to shake out your arms. Ah, that's a toughie. All right, so next part is a hop. So what I want to emphasize here is not using momentum so much. So I'll show you what momentum looks like. It's a little scary, not super safe. So momentum is going to throw off your pose. Notice that I can't really get up there and the alignment's bad. So it's not really a quick movement, it's more of a lean. So you can hop slightly, but mindfully. So less of a flinging of the legs. If you're beyond walking the feet forward and you wanna go a little further, lift one leg up, go heel to the ball of the foot. And the more that you walk that front foot forward, 
the more you're going to be aligned for the forearm stand. So eventually it's light hops, walking a little bit closer in, and maybe you come up. And notice I'm in a back bend. So we warmed up, lots of back bends for this. Elbows in, hands wide. So that was one side. We can do the other side. Hamstring flexibility is super important for this too. If your hamstrings are inflexible, it'll be harder to walk that front foot forward. Meaning, if your hamstrings are tight, you might be way back here. So it's gonna take you a little longer. It's gonna be a lot more of a jump to come up into the forearm stand. As much as you can work your hamstring flexibility and your back bends, be able to walk this foot closer, lift a leg, and then eventually it's just a lean. At first, maybe you're hopping a little more. And if you wanna get fancy with it, just for fun, scorpion. See if I can get my feet to my head today, maybe not. <laughs> Couple breaths. When you come out of this pose, super light landing. Always nice to take a child's pose. I prefer to go arms back. Did lots on the arms already. Knees together. And give yourself a little rock side to side. It's always nice. We'll work a few more back bends today. So look between the hands. We'll bring the knees wide. Sorry if they're together. They're at the back of your mat. As you look between the hands, the chin is along the floor. You're grazing the mat. Hips down, elbows in, look up. And then curl back to child's pose. Inhale, chin along the floor. Exhale, child's pose. Total three rounds, we'll do one more. Look between the hands, chin along the mat. Exhale, child's pose. We'll come back into just the back bend part, chin along the floor. Holding high cobra. So low cobra is with the hips down and the hands hovering. Maybe you're here or with the palms on the floor, a little support. Feet are hips width, but no wider than that. If you go wider than that, you're putting strain on your low back. Important feet hips width, or you can even go feet together, just so you know where your feet are. So either low cobra, or you can press up a little bit. What to avoid in the back bends is the hunchy shoulders. Those shoulders away from the ears. All that space in there. Elbows can bend so that you can create more space. Toes are pointing straight back. Tops of the feet pressed down. You can even lift your head up, as long as the neck is not crunching. It's nice and long. Deep breath. And we'll work a few more back bends. Left ear to the floor. Take a nice little breather on your belly. You can even close your eyes. Listen to the sound of your breath. And next we'll go for a full locust pose, arms to your sides. Feet, hips with her, again, you can squeeze them together just so you know where your feet are. No wider than the hips with the feet as you lift. It's a preference thing, so you can stay here or you can interlock your fingers. This is my personal preference. You can press the palms together, get a little more leverage to lift through your heart, through your legs. Press through the ball mounds of the feet, spread your toes. Lifting up as high as you can. And then release. Strengthening the spine, right ear down, look left. Really important to work your back bends for forearm stand.
We will do one more round of the forearm stand later. So warming up just a little more in the spine. This last cobra on your belly is floor bow. Dhanurasana, bend your knees, point your toes. There's another variation where you flex the feet. Not recommended if you have bad knees or any injury of the knees, it will put more pressure there. The more standard variation, knees, thighs off the floor. Lift the chest and then you're rolling forward more towards your chest. Knees, hips with are closer. Look up, deep breaths. So you're not pulling with your hands, you're just kicking with your feet. The hands are just there to keep your legs in place. And then we'll bring the forehead to the floor, palms flat. Press back, child's pose. Take a couple breaths there. Nice, we'll roll it on up, sit on up. Another round of forearm handstand. This last one. The knees together, elbows grabbing. Here to measure, palms will go flat. Elbows draw in towards each other. Again, you have that beach ball there. Curl the toes, lift your hips. Again, options, hold here, stay. You can also, if you're not quite in the forearm stand yet, work your forearm plank. The forearm plank, dolphin, or we'll start to walk the feet in, lift a leg, pump the heel to the ball of the foot, and then switch legs. As many breaks as you need to take. So maybe you're taking a child's pose between sides or after your both sides. Nothing wrong with taking some breaks. Re-energize, reset your breath. If you want to go for the hopping variation, grab opposite elbows, plant your palms, curl the toes, lift the hips, lean into it, and light hops. Maybe you hold it or just take some hops. Just showing you the warm up. If you lose the elbows, you can always readjust. You can take a child's pose again. Last one. You can even do this with a wall. So if you're not super comfortable yet without a wall in this pose or any inversions, have a wall in front of you. If that's you, you'd have about six inches or so between the tips of your fingers and the wall. So you want to have enough space so that you can kick up and be in a back bend. If you have too much space, then you might be in too deep of a back bend and it's not super comfortable. So six to eight inches even. We'll walk in, lean, and lift. Notice I'm in a back bend. You can even imagine there's a wall in front of me. If you want to go scorpion, you can bend one knee and have the other foot on the wall, press the top of the foot into the wall. And then maybe the other side. Or both. And again, you can always take your break. Arms back, preferred. So your shoulders get a break here, a nice rest. Perfect. Knees wide again. We'll wind it down. Closing sequence. Chin along the mat. Back into your high cobra. Chest to the floor for some strength. Curl the toes. High plank pose. Down dog, lift your hips. A couple of breaths. A 
And we'll look between the hands. You can either float it through. It'll look like this. Nice easy hop. If that's not happening, you can start by bringing the knees to the floor and just crossing your feet. Either way. Nice. We'll bring the feet to the floor. A good way to start this actually is to straighten your left leg, right ankle just above the knee. So you have a nice figure four shape. Fingertips on the floor, bend your front knee, flex the right foot. Move your bottom towards your left heel. And then turn the fingers to point back. So you could do half pigeon. You can also take thread the needle, which would be on your back here. Which I'll show you in just a minute. Or this is a seated version of pigeon. Hip stretch. So we did lots of back bends. Lots of pressure in the lower back, maybe if you're not used to back bending that much. So a good way to release that pressure is opening your hips. So here we are in our seated pigeon. Chest is lifting, nice tall spine, good posture. Shoulders back. If you wanted to take thread the needle, you can also lie onto your back. In the same shape, you'll reach that right arm through, interlock fingers on your shin. If your bottom is off the floor or the shoulders are off the floor, you can hold your hamstring. And if that's too much all together, just palm press your thigh away. So this would be the most basic, maybe hamstring or shin. Notice the right foot is flexed a lot. All right, so whether you're here or you're seated, I'm gonna rock back up to seated. Switch sides. Right leg straight, left ankle, right knee. And if you're in the seated, bend that right knee. Work your bum towards your heel as close as it goes. Point your fingers back so that you can really get some leverage through your arms. Chest forward, spine straight. And if you're on your back again, you can palm press that left thigh, you can reach through the triangle and take your hamstring or the shin and pull. So just the same, your spine is working into a long position. From the neck through the tailbone, nice clean line of energy. And breathe, even close your eyes. I like to rock a little bit here. Or just in more of a static hold. Nice. And if you are seated, we'll meet our friends on their backs. Knees bent. Last little back bend sequence, bridge and wheel. So press the heels into the floor, your knees, feet or hips with distance. Lift your hips off the mat. Roll the shoulders under your body. So you're pressing those palms together. Back of the head into the floor. Imagine you're squeezing a beach ball between your inner thighs. And you can stay here or wheel a little more technical. Rotate your arms back. Your elbows, if they're splaying out, just means that your shoulders are on the tighter side in which you would bring your hands a little bit wider than the shoulders. If that's not you, you can hug the elbows in, hands, shoulders, with distance, start on the crown of your head. And you should have a safe dry grip here. If you do, and you wanna go a little further, lift up. And if not, maybe you're on the crown of the head or maybe you're just working the palms flat on the floor with the back of your head on the floor. If that's too much, stay with bridge. Either way, lift your hips. In either pose, if you have low back compression, it's too much. Heels up, you get a little bit more length in your low spine. Couple of breaths there. Eventually you can start to walk your hands and feet closer together. And then lower down, chin to chest. If you did take that full back bend and wheel and a counter stretch is happy baby. Grab the outer edges of the feet and just rock side to side. Flex your toes and pull. Maybe you just want to pull in the center. Nice little lower back massage, hip stretch. And 
And from here, we'll take a shoulder stand. So legs up the wall. Ball mounds of your big toes pressed together. You can stay here if you have neck or back injury. If you want to go a little bit further, catch the lower or middle back in your hands. Last little inversion. Good practice for them. Stand, big toe, ball mounds pressed together. We can go plow toes overhead. And even ear pressure pose, knees bend. Grab the feet, the heels, pull the knees towards the floor. If that's too much, your hands are just supporting your lower back. I know release out the same way, back to plow, shoulder stand, and then roll it down. For a little bit of time, Bend your knees at the bottom, and from there, spinal twist to finish up today. We'll bring right leg over left. This is an eagle setup. You can wrap the foot behind your calf. If that's a little too much, just cross once at the legs, at the knees. Knees to the left, gaze right. If you have the space for it, your arms go wide. Probably if you're at home, you have lots of space. And if not, you can bend your elbows. So either way, I like to bend the elbows so that the shoulders drop a little closer down to the floor. If you're able to wrap at the calf muscle, go for that. If that's a little bit too much for you, I prefer this one for low back release, but you can also just stack your knees, super basic. Even the left hand on the outer right knee, close your eyes, breathe and twist. We're releasing all of those back bends, releasing the lower spine from your forearm stand practice. And we'll switch sides, knees up. If available, wrap once at the knees and again at your calf muscles. Hips left, knees right, and then look left. So you're looking in the opposite direction of your knees. Either arms T or 90 degrees. You can even use that right hand, this side, and just guide the knees to the floor. Another deep breath, shoulders heavy. And we'll come back to center. Soles of your feet together, knees wide. Supta Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose. We'll take the left hand on your lower belly, the right hand on your heart. Close your eyes again here. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Another deep breath like that and through the nose. Cleansing breath, exhale. On this last one, we'll practice breath retention or kumbhaka. Deep breath in through the nose and hold at the top of your inhale, taking in as much breath as you can. Feeling the stillness throughout when you need to exhale, let it go. Now you can seal your lips, come back to the ujjayi, breathing in and out through the nose. And however you like to prepare for a final resting shavasana, you can stay here, a nice hip stretch in your butterfly, called supta baddha konasana or reclined butterfly. If you prefer to straighten your legs already, whenever it's time, it doesn't have to be right away or now. Right leg top right corner of the mat, Left leg, top left corner of the mat, arms to the sides. Shoulders down, any last little fidgeting or movement that you need to do to complete your practice. And then just relax.
stay as long as you'd like here. Thanks for joining in our forearm stand segment. Namaste.